Y'all ever heard of brain organoids? So organoids are a specific type of tissue culture that's used very widely in research to basically mimic the function of full-sized organs, for example, lungs, heart, etc, etc. You kind of make organoids by taking a stem cell sample and putting it into a growth medium and introducing a bunch of different growth factors that stimulate it to grow into the specific tissue type you want. Now, brain organoids, you may have guessed, are specifically organoids that are grown into brain tissue. So you take some stem cells, you put them in medium, and then you introduce the growth factors. In a few cell cycles, they will turn into baby brains. This one's got eyes. Um, okay, they're not really eyes, but they are functioning optic spots. They're not like full eyes, but they do have like light sensory. They're not image forming but they do have like light sensory organs on it, on this chunk of brain tissue. So how you get a brain organoid, you take a blood sample from a willing donor, and then you take those stem cells found from the blood sample, you isolate them, you culture them, and they start to grow into mini teeny tiny brains. And they really are like small, brains. They have neuronal activity, They their synapses are working, they're making connection, they're firing signals, they have action potentials. They basically are just tiny brains. Now this is kind of a, another image of it. This is not the same one. It does not have eyeballs. And all of these different colors are different like fluorescent dyes showing the activity of the brain. It's very cool looking. So for all intents and purposes, this is a functional teeny teeny tiny brain that can be used for many things. Now, I had a lecture talking about this in one of my classes. Somebody brought up the point of consciousness. We don't know if these things are conscious. We don't think so. They're probably not. But we don't really know for sure. Like, if you Google are brain organoids conscious, the first result that comes up is we have no reason to believe that they're conscious in any meaningful sense, which does not inspire a lot of faith in that. But you know, okay, they're not conscious until proven otherwise, I guess. Now, there are many uses for studying brain organoids. Um, it's a lot better than studying actual brains of actual people, even though technically, this is the brain of an actual person. It's just a second smaller brain because it has the exact same genetic makeup as the person who donated the blood. So essentially, you're growing your own second brain because this came from the stem cells of the donor. So it does have the exact same genetic makeup. So it is kind of like studying your own brain if you like donate your brain without it actually being removed from your head. Now, one area of research that brain organoids are very useful in studying is Alzheimer's research, where you can compare the development of the Alzheimer's disease in the beta amyloid plaques and um, neurofibular, neurofibular, hmm, neurofibrillary tangles that form during Alzheimer's disease. So by comparing the Alzheimer's disease brain taking from blood samples of somebody with Alzheimer's, you compare it to the organoids grown from blood samples taken from somebody without Alzheimer's, and you can like observe the progression of the disease in the brain. So this is very interesting, a little bit terrifying that we could just like grow brains, you know, but it is a very good avenue of research and it decreases the need of animal models and also of human test subjects, which is good. A little bit freaky, but overall a good thing.